Hello, welcome back. Nigel with you, Nigel's Model Image, and we are now on part three of the build <clears throat> of this um, Harkonnen Ornithopter from Meng, Ming, Minge, whatever they are. And uh, there we go, from the film Dune. And I must watch the film and see what it's all about. Well, the part I've seen the part one, now I need to see the part two. Um, but I have also ordered on eBay. Um, the Yamato 2005 film, which is a film I've wanted to see and didn't know what it was called and I got the wrong one so it got sort of forgotten but John helped me out the other night on his um, on his live stream on Friday night and it's now ordered so I should be watching that soon. So uh, where do we get to? We assembled all these bits and pieces here. We've got these pipes which have got a protective cover on them. I don't know if it's to protect this from the pipes or if it's to protect the pipes from this. I don't know. Um, and then so we've got this big cannon going in the bottom and then we've got these lasers or whatever they are. As you can see, I've gone round the outside with the super glue, filled in the seams and then sanded out where I can. Obviously can't get in there and sand, but that'll look OK when it's painted. And then here I've done the same around the back of here and then sanded it all nice and smooth to get rid of those seams. So everything's looking good. As far as that, um, as far as that cannon is concerned, oh, it is there, there it is. We've got to fit this. So we've got this little piece here has got this angled tab on the back. So make sure it's the right way up. And then these side pieces are going to go in here. These side pieces are going to go in here and that tab's going to go in there. There we go. So that's in. So we can grab some extra thin. Sorry about my hand, guys. You'll see a mark on my thumb here. It's where I burnt myself on the oven. Um, I know it's not very nice to look at, but if I put a sticker or something over it it just comes off so and I can't model with rubber gloves on so there we go so I'm afraid you'll have to put up with it I'm sorry so if you don't want to see it then you know tune in for part four maybe it'll be gone by then we shall see but um I suppose I could attempt to not make it so glaringly obvious on the camera if I hold my hand there then you haven't got to look at it just scrape away that seam from there and get in with one of my little icky sticky sanding sticks and go in and get that done like that right so that's that done okay so we're going over the page and we've got our main body here so we have this little laser unit thing going on the front here so that's going to push into that poly cap that cannon there is going to push into that poly cap so as you can see now they're free to move and that is free to swivel this doesn't swivel. It's nice that Ming have made this all quite tight so it doesn't just flop about. So uh, that's there like that. So there's our bits and pieces. You can see on the front of the box those things there are lit up so I'm guessing they're like laser cannons or something. And this is a main cannon or maybe they're just lights. There's lights up here. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen it in action. I have to watch the film as I said. And then we've got these things here. Now these go on and they actually poke out as you can see there. They come from the front and go out and then back. So this one is going to go on this side. So we've got those two pins there and that large square at the back. I'll just look in here if these will go in. There we go, they've gone in. So they're nice and tight. They don't need gluing, but I think that back one does. That back one seems a little... Um, on the loose side so I think what we'll do is just put a drop of cement into that slot go around the edge and then there we go so that's gone in like that and then this side here is going to go in exactly the same but those holes at the front are nice and tight that one there is going in yeah that's not tight enough to stay so we're going to put some cement around there I'm going to leave the front loose because then if we need to we can pull that out to get paint underneath. As I say, there's nothing worse than having at least just a dark coloured plastic. If it was light grey plastic like trumpeter or something then it would be a pain. So there we are. So that's those glued in. As you can see we've done the seams and everything and filled them and that's all good. So uh, moving on now, we've got that there all done. We have GK, L and M and I've got those here. There's L, there's M. There's G and there's K and they're all cleaned up and ready to go so we can get straight in with building. So that's going to go that way round. This is F34 and then this piece on the side, the narrow piece, 
is F23. That's going to go over that pin in there. Now I'm not sure about the design of this. I'm not sure if it needs to be glued or not. Um, and then we've got this piece here, which is F14. Great number, great aircraft. As we all know. That's gone in like that. Now I'm going to look over the page and see where these go. Um, they look like rear skids or something. They're solid. So what we're going to do is get some cement in there, get some in there, get some down in there. That should be enough to hold them together. Okay, and I'm just going to brush some lightly over here on the outside to get rid of those sanding marks and stuff. So that's G. K is going to be the same. So we've got the angled bit going back. Yes. So the angle bit's going back and then on here this one's going to go on like that. That's going to press into there. There we are. And then we'll get some cement in there around those pins. Um, there we go. Right. There we go. Okay. L. So there we are. Um, I'm guessing we're going to put this in here first. We've got a off center look, so it can only go one way. You can see those, those little square blocks on there are off center, so it can only go in. Whoops, come here. Can only go in one way, so that's going to go in like that. I'm going to give that a nudge with the back of a blade, just like so, and then that one. Nope, wrong way round, Nigel. Do the. That one's going to pop on over the top. Wow. Okay, so what we're going to do is put some cement in there to hold that in, because we won't be able to get in there afterwards. And then this is going to go on the top. Come on. Looks like that's made. I've got these. I remember I've got these two mixed up when I was sanding them. Yep, I did have them mixed up. So obviously you can't put it together with the wrong parts. So we're going to run some cement into there. Run some down into there. On the inside there and there. There we go. And then the same on this one. Narrow end is towards me, so we'll put that in there like that. Give it a nudge with the back of a blade. Square it up. Get a drop of cement in there to hold it. Blow all that dust out of there. Turn it around nice, wrap it around again. There we are. That's gone together beautifully. So brush across there. Brush across there, drop in there, drop in there. And across there. There we go. So that's those all together. Now I'm just looking at them. I think I need to do a little bit more clean up on these. And I think these have a seam line that needs to be dealt with. So I'm going to do that. Let it all dry. Sand it back. And then I'll come back and we'll get on with the uh, with the next step, which is fitting these things into the bottom and these things on the side. Now, I've got these mixed up now. I think that one's L, the semicircular bit there, yeah. So you've got an angle on there. You can see it's fatter on this side than it is on that side, so that'll be because it's angled. We're the right way up now, mind. So that's going to go in. There, but I'm going to deal with those seams first and then I'll come back a little while later now and all of this is dry. This has all been done, all the seams have been filled with black super glue. Just go over and quickly give it a polish with a sadness sponge, remove any, any um, sanding marks or, or whatever. Just round off any edges, just soften any edges, make it look a bit better. There we go. Right, so um, 
Next thing we've got to do is fit K and G. So we have K and G. Now which was which? That's the problem. They both look identical. So I'm guessing it doesn't really matter which one goes where. No, that one has. Okay. Right, so if we go back to here, we can see Okay, we can see here that this one is moulded and it's flat across there and this one is moulded and it's flat across there. See what I mean? We've got a straight line there. So when you look at these, you can see that this side has a straight line, as pretty instructions. When you look at the other side, it comes down below. So that must be G and that one. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's obviously not working like that at all. No, sorry, yeah, that one, that one must be G and that one must be K. That's right. OK, because they're looking away from us. So that's G with the flat side there and that's K with the flat side there. And then when we look at these, we've got this raised lump within this filter part here. And on this one it's to the right, so that must be M, and on this one it's to the left, so that must be L. You see the raised lump there. So if you've got your parts mixed up, then don't worry about it. Right, so we know that this one here is G. Yeah, G. <laughs> I had to do my alphabet in my head then. So we're going this way up, and this is going to sit on the top here. So G is going in there. It feels like quite a tight fit. It was like a very tight fit actually. It's going to need some clean up. It's got a mould seam in there I can see. So I'll just scrape that away. Wow. There we go, it's gone in now. They definitely don't need gluing. Um, and then this side here is going to go in like that. There we go. They don't need gluing at all. So I don't know exactly what they are, but they're something or other. <laughs> they do something. And then this one is L. So this one's going to go in here. You can see it's sloping. You can see this is tapered in. So to keep them straight, they have the, the taper going in at the bottom. So that one's going there. Again, I don't think that needs gluing. And then that one's going there. If you have a motorised model, so it's shaking, vibrating, whatever, I would recommend gluing everything. But on a static model like this, if this had motorised blades or something, I would glue everything because you'll get certain and certain frequencies will set up and it'll make these parts fall out. And they won't fall out when you're expecting them to fall out. When you move house or pick it up and put it somewhere, they'll just fall off and get lost forever in the carpet. OK, so looking here, moving along, I've got some parts off. So we've got here, we've got, these are the, this is the remains of Sprue B. So these are the parts. I've left, I've left F1 and F2 on the Sprue because they look pretty similar, but I don't want to get them mixed up. So we've got these parts off and cleaned up. So this is um, this is going to be C5, okay, and this is going to be C6. We'll put those bits there out of the way. So wrong way of going back upside down again. So basically, this one's going to go on there like that. Now is that going up inside? It looks like that's probably going up inside there. And then that's going to go on to that side. And they're going to go together like that, and sandwich around the fuselage. Now, that's solidly in position. That doesn't need any adjustment whatsoever. Um, and we're going to cement that into place. So I'm going to grab my Tamiya Extra Thin. And I'm going to run some along there. 
again we'll have to do some seam filling this is what modeling is all about guys you don't have to you don't have to at all if you don't want to don't worry about it I like to because I can't stand seeing seams on models whether they be mold seams from the molding or seams from assembly you know like when you put two fuselage halves together it looks awful if you've got a seam there so here we've got the seam is there isn't it the seam is down the side of that blade there we go so that's that one in place so I'm going to get a couple of clothes pegs on there One on there. In fact, I'm going to use a bulldog clamp on there because it's quite small. Let me get a peg on there just to help it stay together. And then the next bit, the instructions, they want us to assemble this piece here. That's going to go on like, we have to use this side because we've got the big lugs. So that's going to go on there like that. And that's going to go on there like that. Okay, and then that's going to go into there like that. And that's going to go into that. And we've got this piece going in between those two pins at the back. Let's get that clothes peg out of the way. That's going to come up underneath there. In fact, what we'll do, we'll put this onto that pin. Oops, it doesn't want to stay on there. Not exactly sure what it's supposed to do, so I don't know whether I want to glue it or not. Get that pin in there. Wow. <laughs> that's fun. There you go, we got it in the end. Okay, so that's gone together there on there. Now that's not moving I wondered if it was going to be a moving part so what we're going to do here is once again we're just going to come in with some cement and cement that joint up and we've got some gaps at the top here I'm not going to cement this because it may have to move around to get this piece going on the top so I'm not going to cement the top I'm just going to cement that pin there and there we go so we've got a seam down here to deal with, we've got a seam there to deal with, and a seam under there, and also I'll do something else about filling that gap in there. So there we are, right. So we've got these bits now, F1 and F2. So I've got this, I thought I had F1 and F2 here ready. Clearly I haven't. Here it is. So F1 is this one, and we've got these we've got these mounting blocks on the bottom. So I'm going to cut them well away from the part because I'm not sure what is part and what is actually sprue gate. It's always uh, it's always worth double checking, guys. So these bits in between are easy to see because we've got a tiny little sprue gate. And then I assume these are going to be the same. So keeping the cutters at the same angle. And then with our, with our skinny stick, here it is, over here. Come in like that. And there we go, that's that cleaned up. So this goes on, we are underneath. And this is F1, so this is going to go into those holes there. Is that correct? Yep, it goes in. They're quite tight. Be very careful not to snap anything. We've also got a mold seam on there which I want to get rid of. 
So I'm going to grab my tweezers, wherever they may be. And I'm going to get that mould seam off. We're going to have to be very careful. You can see already I've stressed the plastic there where that white mark is. So I have to be very careful. I'm going to get a sanding sponge and just run around. Yeah, we've got some flash on there. That flash on a main kit, that's unusual. Just scrape the seam first. And then gentle sand, the soft sand is sick, sponge. Just like so. And then I'll come back to gluing it in. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to put a drop of cement in each hole. Because believe it or not, that will make it easier to push those pins in because the drop of cement will act almost as like a lubricant initially before it grabs it and sticks it. So that's my tweezers. I don't want to get any glue marks. I don't want to get any glue on my fingers because that will spread everywhere. So that will go in there. And then that one will go in there. See how much easier they go in now? You can see now they've all gone in. And then just to make sure they don't fall out, drop a cement on each one. If you're quick, if you just dab it on and get away. Just like that, you won't have any issues. I'm going to put some cement around there. And then give that a little squeeze. There we go. And there we are. So I'll do the same on the other side. And then I'll get these seams done with. And then we'll come back and see where we go next. Right, I just turned the page. And lo and behold, we've got another bit to go on. So this is going to be going into here. So that's pretty cool. So we can get that whole area filled, seam dealt with, finished and everything all, all good. So this is F28, so we've got B1 and B2. So this is B1 with the hole, because B2 has the pin, looking at the instructions. So that's going to go that way up and that's going to go on there. And then this is going to go onto here. And they will squeeze together. And then this piece here, B6, um, it looks like it's symmetrical. Very nice actually. Uh, it's very nicely moulded. That's going to go in like so. Okay, so that's that together. Right. So we will put some cement into there and let that capillary along. Put some into there and let that capillary along. We'll also brush over where the where the sanding marks are. Mics, marks. And I'm going to put a peg on there just to hold that together for a second. Let the glue do its thing. And then that is actually in turn going to go onto here. So that is going to come down. We will put the close peg there. So that is going to come down and sit in that groove just like so. So what we need to do is lift that up pull it out and polish. We've got sanding marks here where there's a sprue gate. I thought that was going to disappear down behind the flanges so we're just going to polish those sanding marks out. Okay and put that in again just like so. So that's gone in there and now what we can do is run some extra thin down there and run it along the side where those sanding mics are. I keep saying sanding mics, don't I? I don't know what's wrong with me. Complete and utter imbecile. Okay, so that's gone in there. We can deal with that seam. And there we go. That's that done. I'll be drying out. 
So now we've got trouble, we have to stand it on its roof because it won't stand up on its feet because we have this tail piece coming out. It's looking like a like a big um, dragonfly, isn't it? So there we go. We've got a seam under there, we've got a seam here, and nothing much here to deal with. So it's all looking very good. It's beautifully designed so that the seams all become sort of panel joins and stuff, which is great for sci-fi stuff, not so good for model aircraft when you actually have to glue them. So next on the block is going to be rotor blades. So we're going to leave that to the next part. We're going to leave that to part four um, and we're going to fit our rotor blades and then we're on to landing gear. So we are nearly there. So I reckon part five might get us through. It'll probably be part six as well with the build and then we'll get some painting done. I might have to send this off to Luke to paint because I can't do it. I'm rubbish. We shall see. But uh, yeah, we'll get it looking lovely. Um, I notice a lot of people go for this sort of browny colour. I'm going to go for the, the grey black, sort of um, with a brown wash, maybe. We shall see. But um, those guys are sat in there patiently waiting for their flight with their flesh tones. <laughs> right. It's massive. You can see how big those cannons are when you compare it to the size of the men inside. Yeah, I know it's all fictitious. It doesn't actually exist. Does well, they actually do. They apparently. I was looking up some research and um, apparently they built real ones of these and took them to the desert and they, they had to take, I think AN-124s had to take them because they were 11 tonnes each. So uh, the actual built mock-ups for the film, obviously a lot of what you see is CGI, but uh, yeah, there we are. Right, I will see you all for part four. I'm going to basically go on and deal with these seams in here and then I'll come back and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Look at that. Door going to fold down there as well, look, which is nice. Glad I painted all that in grey because we'd never got paint up inside there. So uh, there we are. I will see you all for part four. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now.